for me, it is about the law and people. That is not a legal defense, let me tell you. And how people can resolve and better themselves. Justice with passion. I knew I was going to go into law because I always defended everybody. I was always the one who found a solution and tried to resolve the problem by having people talk to each other. Justice with truth. So I'm giving you one more chance to tell me the truth. This is Justice for All with Judge Christina Perez. Reverend Dr. Charles V. Freeman is suing Reverend Ronald Kirk in the amount of $4,725. Reverend Freeman says he was bamboozled by Reverend Kirk and claims the defendant stole money from the church's scholarship fund. Reverend Kirk denies stealing any of the scholarship funds and says the money spent went towards expenses for a student in the program. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Christina Perez presiding. Please be seated. All parties have been sworn in, Your Honor. Thank you, Bernard. Reverends, both of you, Mr. Reverend Freeman. Yes, Your Honor. Why are you suing Reverend Kirk? Basically, he misused the church funds. No, Your Honor. He's, we hired him as a bookkeeper only. He's established, which I had no problem, he's established a, a youth fund. We found out that there were misappropriations of funds in, no. that, in that account. And also, we found out that he joined a country club for f over $500. Mm. Our, 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 our comptroller, Ms. Braxton, brought this to my attention. I questioned him. He said that, the, by the way, this golf outing, this is for a golf outing. We find out that's not true. We also find that's out lie, this, we, we find out also the fact that this four hundred dollars went to a, a child that his mother that he said that the child that he identified said had no idea they'd never received funds. Who is in charge of all church finances? We have a comptroller, Miss Braxton, okay. and she's not here today, Your Honor. So she's the only authorized person on the checkbook, or are you also? I am also there. Okay. I and am also too, Your Honor. That's incorrect. Your Honor. Okay. He's a bookkeeper. He's no. not a comptroller. Okay. Just for the general church fund, I know for this the youth fund, you are also signatory, from what I understand. But the general church fund, normally what happens is that you have one major checking account. Uh, you are a signator. The comptroller is a signator. Um, certain expenses over a certain amount must be approved by you and other members of the congregation or committee. I imagine you have a yes, finance. Committee. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I never touched those funds. Was he the one that started this this youth group? He started the scholarship fund. Okay. And the youth group. So, Reverend Kirk, is everything that Reverend Friedman said correct up to this point? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I, I started the scholarship fund, but I was originally brought into the church by the regional bishop mm -hmm. to help grow the church. Mm -hmm. Okay, when I got to the church, I had all these outreach programs. I'm bringing the youth back into the church. When I first got there, no one, no one under 40 years old was in the church, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Now we have youth in there. We have single moms in there. We have dads in there. We have so many people that it's so packed in the church now, Your Honor, that people have to stand up in the back. So That's fabulous. I, I brought, you're on, you're on, I brought I, the I, population I, back to the church. And how did you help, uh, ex explain to me, what, it, what did you do to help attract this new membership? I'm a lot younger than uh, the Reverend, so I'm out there meeting the community, talking to people, attending the high school mm -hmm. events, attending the junior high school events, just really reaching out to the people because the church is empty. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want the kids on the street, so I'm okay. coming up with a youth program. Okay, I bring got all it. these people in. That, that, that's fabulous. Your Honor, I got to Reverend Freeman. That Reverend of, Freeman. Reverend Freeman. Reverend Freeman. Yes or no? Did he do that? Did he go out to the, do outreach to the high schools, to the junior high schools? Ma'am, I'm going to yes, say he did. no. He didn't. Man, we had 5,000 members. The bishop. All right. Okay. Well, excuse so me. So obviously there is a huge. Uh, you guys were not at the same church, obviously. Okay, so let's get to the scholarship fund since this is what we are uh, here about. Uh, Reverend Freeman suing you for almost $5,000, $4,725, uh, because he believes that you misappropriated some of those funds or that you misappropriated all of the funds. The scholarship fund for the church was established by you. Uh, who is the signator on that checking account? I am, Your Honor. You're the sole signator. Yes, Your Honor. Incorrect, um, Your Honor. Who's the other signator? The comptroller, Ms. Braxton. Okay. So both of you are signators on that account? Your Honor. Yes or no? No, Your Honor. I handle that account. She handles the accounts of... of Do we have any evidence? 
Miss Braxton you, you, was supposed you got, to be. You, you guys are. She, she's are not even completely disagreeing in everything. His, so his, it's going to be my job to read between the lines and my job to understand what you guys are saying because Your Honor, it, it's amazing to believe there's so this, much this, this harmony this is my between program, two Your Honor. of you. Coming up on Justice for All. Are you there to help people walk the proper way? Absolutely. Or are you there to see whose ego is bigger? Because to me, this is not about the Lord. This is not about helping people. This is about whose ego is bigger. Absolutely, and that's what I'm starting to believe. And later. It's a very simple she transaction. Wrote, she asked me about she bought tickets all you had to do was put it in the mail it's that simple yeah it's extremely simple closed captioning provided by if you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court call 1-888-552-6878 you're watching justice for all with judge Christina Perez we're back with the case of Reverend dr. Charles V Freeman who is suing Reverend Ronald Kirk for fraud let's get to the scholarship fund so how were you raising money and who was giving money to the scholarship fund? Car washes, bake sales. Uh, the, the kids are just out there really putting their ground, working, you know, reaching the community, talking to people, getting them all okay. active, getting so it all going. Okay, so through special fundraisers, the actual youth of the church raised money to put into the scholarship Fund. Correct, Your Honor. There was nothing in the fund when I got there. This okay. is something True that I false. created. Did, Man, did, the, the, church, did the church raise, just, the church youth raise money to put in the scholarship? Absolutely. Fund? Gonna, Your Honor, I'm going to say false on these conditions. In our city, ma'am, they have okay, to have Okay, so a, I'm going to ask you, Mr. Honor, Freeman. Mr. Freeman, okay, hair. listen, I've been patient with you both. I mean, what? So, Ma'am, there's no record of requesting a, f a permit to do any I mean, fundraising. Are you there to help the people? Are you there to help people walk the proper way? Absolutely. Or are you there to see whose ego is bigger? Because to me, this is not about the Lord. This is not about helping people. This is about whose ego is bigger. Absolutely, and that's what I'm starting to believe. And it's a shame if that is the case. That's not and the case, I hope Your to Honor. God that I'm, well, it seems to be because now you're arguing with me. Do you Why have any evidence of anything? Do you guys have any evidence? Yes, ma'am. Yes, you Your have? Honor. I have evidence. What, have what evidence do you have, Reverend Freeman? Okay, I have credit card bills. I have letters from... Okay, the... everything to Renard. What evidence do you have, Ms. Reverend Kirk? The golf club. Give membership. me everything you have, sir. Give me everything you have. Okay, so explain your evidence. Okay, do you have in front of you, you have a, you, first of all, you have a credit card chart, uh, a statement. These are line items. First of all, it says 525 at the bottom for a golf club, uh, a, a country club membership. That wasn't authorized. Uh, Before, uh, let me ask you something about the scholarship uh, yes. fund. How were the funds supposed to be distributed? This is, this is distributed, that we were supposed to have the pastoral staff would have a meeting on a weekly basis to see what student, and they are petitioned to see what students are in need that are in currently enrolled in, in college. I had a conversation with him about funding a child who really needed the money and he was at a breaking point where he could either go the right way or he could go the wrong way. So I said, let's steer him towards the right way. All the funds I spent was for this child in order to ensure a great future. You're I didn't spend any money on myself. Reverend Kirk speaking to you, Reverend Freeman, about... Uh, After the charges were brought to my attention by the comptroller, ma'am. You look at the files, Okay, do you remember him asking you we should give the money no, to this specific case? No, ma'am, that never case? did happen. This is a, an email from... Uh, I, can't, I can't say who they are. Essentially, she says this correspondence, it's uh, husband and wife, find you well and your family well. Thank you for reaching out to us. It's good to hear from you. It's been a while, so you reached out to them. And they say it's fantastic to hear that you have a program dedicating to assisting all students receive funds and scholarships. Exactly. Uh, we've never been contacted by our family, and we're writing th this letter to let you know that we've never received any scholarship funds for our son. Yes, ma'am. That's, okay. that's the name of the student that Kirk here said that we you were You just given. said I didn't talk to you about a student. You talked to us about the charges after they but hit I, the account. But I have no proof that that's the name here yeah. with exactly. your billing. No, no, ma'am. I've never, private, I've never said that student was the one who was going to get the money. He just goes to a random student and say, did you get money? 
He's I a never, private investigator. We give, student, we give the money to the students who need the money, Your Honor. We don't give the money to private investigators who don't need the money. This is what I'm going to do. It is very clear you were not prepared to come to court to put on a case. It is very clear that you were not ready to present your side of the case. It was very clear that you came to hear yourself speak and not you were not ready to hear or to listen to anybody else speak. You are alleging things. You have no evidence of anything. Uh, it is it's as if you two don't even know each other. So I will give you the opportunity to refile this case and come back with a comptroller, come back with concrete evidence. I don't want just a simple ledger that says the reference number, the month, and it says private tight tuition. That doesn't say anything to me. It doesn't give me a copy of the canceled checks. It doesn't show me who wrote the checks out. It doesn't show me anything. I cannot just rule in your favor because you're telling me this is the way it goes. Unfortunately, it has nothing to do with faith. It has nothing to do with who you are or what you do for a living. I have to look at facts. And you two seem to not know each other. It's as if you two are running two different journeys in your life and maybe you're not at the same church. I don't know. Maybe that's something else that you guys need to look at too. Because the mere fact that you allow him to be a signature in this checkbook tells me that at least you had the knowledge he was writing checks and did you then turn a blind eye and ignore it all completely and now you're complaining I don't know but it seems to me you're just as responsible in the situation as Reverend Kirk is so I am dismissing this case without any prejudice so if you would like to refile it with your ducks in order and and explain to me what really happened fantastic but I I, I will not sit here and listen to you speak and speak and speak and tell me without explaining do you understand that Reverend Yes, ma'am, I do. Okay, I will await for the new filing, and I recommend that you too, Reverend Kirk, put your ducks in order. Give me all the evidence to prove and to establish your name. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Judge Perez has ruled the case has been dismissed. Well, I'm definitely going to see you again in court. I'm not going to let you steal anything from my church, but for now, I'm satisfied. Pastor, I really wanted to help the kids. I wish you could have saw that. But, you know, good luck to you and your church. Coming up on Justice For All. I put the tickets in the mail, paid it extra, tried to get her in time. I was, I was hoping to go to this show myself. I, would, I, I feel her okay, pain on show, this. But... Give me the evidence to, uh, to show that you mailed the tickets because this number is completely invalid. Closed captioning provided by... Now. You're watching Justice For All with Judge Christina Perez. Marla Scott is suing Andrew Robbins in the amount of $1,060. Ms. Scott claims she paid for concert seats twice because Mr. Robbins didn't send the tickets she originally purchased from him. Mr. Robbins claims he sent the tickets out as soon as he got the plaintiff's address. Ms. Scott, I understand you purchased tickets to go to a concert from the defendant. I did. But you never received them. No, I did not. <laughs> Tell me what happened. I... Reconnected with my high school sweetheart last year. Around uh, early November, we started thinking about what to do for our anniversary. And I started looking online at our favorite band. And I happened to notice that on their tour dates, they had a show in Hawaii mm -hmm. on Valentine's Day. I happened to find a, a website called ticketsforyou.com mm -hmm. where uh, Mr. Robbins was selling two tickets for the concert for $220. I purchased the ticket with my credit card on the website mm -hmm. and I received a confirmation. And it had a confirmation number, it had Do you the have receipt. you that evidence? I have everything, okay. yes, Go everything ahead and give Renard your evidence. When I purchased the tickets and received the confirmation from the website, I was under the impression that the tickets had been bought and that I would either receive e-tickets or see them at will call. It wasn't until 10 days after that mm -hmm. that I received an email from Mr. Robbins letting me know that he was the seller of the tickets and that he was requesting a address to okay. send the tickets to. Did you mail them to her? She also uh, told me that it'd be too short notice to mail them to Los Angeles when she was already coming into town on this Wednesday. This was 10 days after you bought them. How much time did you have until you went to Hawaii? I had about two months. Okay, that was plenty of time. So yes. why did you not mail them? Coming up. Well, it doesn't matter what she thought, it's what you... Yeah. It was a, it's a very simple she transaction. Really, she asked me about She bought me. tickets. All you had to do was put them in the mail. It's that simple. Yeah. It's extremely simple. 
Closed captioning provided by... You're watching Justice for All with Judge Christina Perez. We're back with the case of Marla Scott, who is suing Andrew Robbins for the cost of concert tickets. Did you provide the Hawaii address? Yes. Did you receive a Hawaii address? Yes. Mm -hmm. Why were they not delivered to the Hawaii I address? Them, uh, I even paid the $15 extra to pay for the, the express shipping, and they, I, I just don't know why. It's beyond me why they haven't gotten to her. Um, he provided me with a tracking number, which you, you can see in, in my evidence. Yes. I, once I received the tracking number from him, I tried going on to USPS.com and checking that tracking number. And it says it was an invalid tracking you number? You can see the, yeah. the response that I got yeah. saying that it just wasn't available. Did you have a phone number for him? I did not have a phone number. I okay. only had the email address. Did you that... realize she did not get the tickets, that your tracking number did not exist? Uh, no, I sent it through the website and... I mean, my, might be a problem with either the website or the post office because I put the tickets in the mail, paid it extra, tried to get her in time. I was, I was hoping to go to this show myself. I would, I, I feel her okay. pain you on show, this. But... Give me the evidence to, uh, to show that you mailed the tickets because this number is completely invalid. Where is proof that you mailed them? The, in the tracking number. Of... The tracking number is invalid. Maybe they'll still pop up. I don't know. This, this is beyond me. Why? Okay, I'm, uh... Bernard, do me a favor. Can you step out and, and double check this? Uh... Uh, that tracking number on USPS, please. So you did not receive the tickets. Still have not received them, no. Judge Perez's verdict when justice for all returns. Promotional consideration provided by... What did you do for the concert? I mustered up some confidence to approach uh, one of the scalpers around the, the arena and... You and scalped tickets. You we did for, so for eighty dollars a piece. So one hundred and sixty dollars. Yes. Spent. Okay. Honestly, yeah, it was a hard our anniversary was uh, ruined. So Renard, it's not valid, and right, you called the post office. Check is not valid. So uh, you are suing him for one thousand sixty. Why one thousand yes, sixty? So I have included the two twenty from the original tickets. Mm -hmm. I also included the one sixty for the scalper tickets, and I included the six eighty for the travel since. Invariably, the, the trip was ruined, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. All right, so, uh, Mr. Robbins, uh, when somebody intentionally misrepresents, lies, flat out lies about something, and, and they purposely lie to gain a benefit, that's fraud. So, you intentionally lied, uh, you misrepresented what you had, you got $220 in return, she got zero. She got nothing. So, she is allowed to get her money back. For what she paid, so 220. Uh, on top of that, I'm going to give her the 160 that she spent, so that's 380. And on top of that, we're going to give her 200 dollars because you know what? She just was miserable. Okay. So total, we will award uh, the the plaintiff 580 dollars. Okay. Thank you. All rise. Judge Perez has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant is ordered to pay $580. I'm so glad the judge was able to see that you scammed me out of those tickets. You almost ruined my anniversary. I don't know what to say. I'm not a scammer or a scalper. I'm sorry this happened to you. This sucks. This has been a production of Entertainment Studios. For me, it is about the law and people. That is not a legal defense, let me tell you. And how people can resolve and better themselves. Justice with passion. I knew I was going to go into law because I always defended everybody. I was always the one who found a solution and tried to resolve the problem by having people talk to each other. Justice with truth. So I'm giving you one more chance to tell me the truth. This is Justice for All with Judge Christina Perez. Reverend Dr. Charles V. Freeman is suing Reverend Ronald Kirk in the amount of $4,725. Reverend Freeman says he was bamboozled by Reverend Kirk and claims the defendant stole money from the church's scholarship fund. Reverend Kirk denies stealing any of the scholarship funds and says the money spent went towards expenses for a student in the program.
Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Christina Perez presiding. Please be seated. All parties have been sworn in, Your Honor. Thank you, Bernard. Reverends, both of you, Mr. Reverend Freeman. Yes, Your Honor. Why are you suing Reverend Kirk? Basically, he misused the church funds. No, Your Honor. He said, we hired him as a bookkeeper only. He's established, which I had no problem, he's established a, a youth fund. We found out that there were misappropriations of funds and no. that and that. Uh, hear about uh, Reverend Freeman suing you for almost $5,000, $4,725, uh, because he believes that you misappropriated some of those funds or that you misappropriated all of the funds. The scholarship fund for the church was established by you. Uh, who is the signator on that checking account? I am, Your Honor. You're the sole signator? Yes, Your Honor. Incorrect, um, Your Honor. Who's the other signator? The comptroller, Ms. Braxton. Okay. So both of you are signators on that account? Your Honor. Yes or no? No, Your Honor. I handle that account. She handles the accounts of... Um, Do we have any evidence? Ms. Braxton you, you, was supposed you to got, be... You, you guys are... She, she's are not even... completely disagreeing in everything. His, so so his, it's going to be my job to read between the lines and my job to understand what you guys are saying because Your Honor, it, it's amazing to believe there's so this, much this, disharmony this is my between program, two Your Honor. of you. Coming up on Justice For All. Are you there to help people walk the proper way? Absolutely. Or are you there to see whose ego is bigger? Because to me, this is not about the Lord. This is not about helping people. This is about whose ego is bigger. Absolutely, and that's what I'm starting to believe. And later. It's a very simple she transaction. Really, she asked me about she you bought tickets, all you had to do was put it in the mail. It's that simple. Yeah. It's extremely simple. Closed captioning provided by. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to that account. And also, we found out that he joined a country club for over $500. Mm. Our, 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 our comptroller, Miss Braxton, brought this to my attention. I questioned him. He said that, the, by the way, this golf outing, this is for a golf outing. We find out that's not true. We also find that's out lie, this, your Honor. we find out also the fact that this four hundred dollars went to a, a child that his mother that he said that the child that he identified said had no idea they'd never received funds. Who is in charge of all church finances? We have a comptroller, Miss Braxton, okay. and she's not here today, Your Honor. So she's the only authorized person on the checkbook, or are you also? I am also there. Okay. I and am also too, Your Honor. That's incorrect. Your Honor. Okay. He's a bookkeeper. He's no. not a comptroller. Okay. Just for the general church fund, I know for this the youth fund, you are also signatory, from what I understand. But the general church fund, normally what happens is that you have one major checking account. Uh, you are a signator. The comptroller is a signator. Um, certain expenses over a certain amount must be approved by you and other members of the congregation or committee. I imagine you have a yes, finance committee. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I never touched those funds. Was he the one that started this this youth group? He started the scholarship fund. Okay. And the youth group. So, Reverend Kirk, is everything that Reverend Friedman said correct up to this point? To court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching Justice for All with Judge Christina Perez. We're back with the case of Reverend Dr. Charles V. Freeman, who is suing Reverend Ronald Kirk for fraud. Let's get to the scholarship fund. So how were you raising money and who was giving money to the scholarship fund? Car washes, bake sales. Uh, the, the kids are just out there really putting their ground, working, in, you know, reaching the community talking to people, getting them all active, okay. getting so it all going. Okay, so through special fundraisers, the actual youth of the church raised money to put into the scholarship fund. Correct, Your Honor. There was nothing in the fund when I got there. This okay. is something True that I false. created. Did, Man, the, did, the, program church, was something I created. did the church raise, just, the church youth raise money to put in the scholarship fund? Absolutely. I'm just, Your Honor, I'm going to say false on these conditions. In our city, Ma'am, they have okay, to have Okay, so I'm going to ask you, Your Mr. Honor, Freeman. Mr. Freeman, okay, hair. listen, I've been patient with you both. I mean, so, Ma'am, there's no record of requesting a, a permit to do any I mean, fundraising. Are you there to help the people? Are you there 
to help people walk the proper way? Absolutely. Or are you there to see whose ego is bigger? Because to me, this is not about the Lord. This is not about helping people. This is about whose ego is bigger. Absolutely, and that's what I'm starting to believe. And it's a shame if that is the case. That's not and the case. I yes, Your Honor. Okay. I, I started the scholarship fund, but I was originally brought into the church by the regional bishop mm -hmm. to help grow the church. Mm -hmm. Okay, when I got to the church, I had all these outreach programs. I'm bringing the youth back into the church. When I first got there, no one, no one under 40 years old was in the church, Your Honor. Mm. Now we have youth in there. We have single moms in there. We have dads in there. We have so many people that it's so packed in the church now, Your Honor, that people have to stand up in the back. So That's fabulous. I, I brought, Your Honor, Your Honor, I brought the I, I, population back to the church. And how did you help uh, exp explain to me? What, it, what did you do to help attract this new membership? I'm a lot younger than uh, the Reverend, so I'm out there meeting the community, talking to people, attending the high school mm -hmm. events, attending the junior high school events, just really reaching out to the people because the church is empty. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want the kids on the street, so I'm okay. coming up with a youth program. Okay, I bring Got all it. these people in. That, that, that's that, fabulous. Your Honor, I've got to Reverend Freeman. That Reverend of, Freeman. Reverend me. Freeman. Yes or no? Did he do that? Did he go out to the, do outreach to the high schools, to the junior high schools? Ma'am, I'm going to yes, say he did. no. He didn't. Man, we had 5,000 members. The bishop. All right. Okay. Well, excuse so me. So obviously there is a huge. Uh, you guys were not at the same church, obviously. Okay, so let's get to the scholarship fund since this is what we are.